underway at Pitt Stadium. The Fighting Irish, the Gold Trousers, the White Shirts, and the Pitt Panthers, the Gold Trousers, and the Blue Shirts. And the balance of the Pitt football team now making their way onto the field just a minute before kickoff. One thing to watch for on the kickoff. Joel Howard, as we mentioned in the pregame show, plays split end on offense, but he's the kickoff return man. He has five returns this year for a total of 111 yards, and he busted one for 30 yards as a long gainer. As Bob already told you the weather, 30 degrees today, wind out of the west, 5 to 15 miles an hour, cloudy. 10% chance of rain, but nah, it's going to stay away. It'll be a great day. I'll go along with that. Let's let's keep it upstairs for this one. Our statistician this afternoon, Tom Purnell, and our spotter, Robert Markison. And we're looking forward to a good one. We've got the best people working with us in the booth this afternoon as well as well as in our truck. Excuse me! Notre Dame on the year at 5-1-1. One one. They've got Penn State Air Force and Southern Cal to look forward to Pitt. Got him. And when you got a guy doing that for you, it always gives you good field position to begin with. But you got to keep an eye on Howard. He can burn you. All right, Chris Stone, Alan Pinkett, and uh, Pat Bellage are back for Notre Dame to take the opening kickoff. And the crowd on their feet for the opening kickoff as Schubert awaits the signal, and he's got it. Line drive kick. Dropped in the end zone and picked up by Pinkett. Pinkett at the 15 of the 20. And finally down in the vicinity of the 24-yard line. The tackle was made by Snuffy Everett of Pitt. And so Notre Dame will put it in play at their own 24-yard line. Notre Dame with Blair Keel at quarterback, the tailback Phil Carter, the fullback Larry Moriarty, the split end is Joe Howard, flanker is Mike Haywood, and the tight end is uh, Tony Hunter. Keel from the eye. Goes to the tailback on the first play. Phil Carter is dumped at about the 25-yard line. The tackle made by Rich Kranick. One yard gain on the play. It'll be second and nine. Notre Dame's offensive line. We've got Larry Williams, Neil Monty, Mark Fisher, Tom Thayer, and Mike Kelly. Second and nine. Notre Dame at their own 25-yard line. Once again from the eye. Larry Keel on the long count. Fires. Incomplete. Intended for Joe Howard. Howard, the split end. Incomplete. And it'll bring up third down and nine yards to go. Pitt's defensive line includes Michael Brooks at left end, Dave Pozzoli at left tackle, J.C. Pelusi, the middle guard, Bill Maz at right tackle, and Al Wenglikowski at right end. Obvious passing down for the Fighting Irish on third and nine. Keel with one setback. Goes on the long count. Fires over the middle of this cut by Tony Hunter. And Hunter is awfully close to an Irish first down where Mike Brooks for Pitt makes the defensive play at about the 36. And Notre Dame indeed picks up the first down. One thing, one thing about Hunter, he is the leading receiver on this team. He is a tight end that once lined up at split end last year against USC. A 21-7, 220 he has been recorded, and he can burn for a tight end. Notre Dame at their own 36-yard line, first down and 10. Keel operating from the eye. And it goes once again to the tailback as Phil Carter hurdles. And Rich Kranick makes the stop of the flag on the play near the 40. Dave Pozzoli also with an assist on the tackle up near the 40-yard line, but a, we mentioned a flag on the play. It's a holding call on Notre Dame. And I believe we'll have uh, the official pass along the official information to us. They'll step it back from the 36-yard line. 
Game just underway. There is no score. Notre Dame in uh, control of the football. So the ball is brought back to the 27 yard line. It is first down and about 20. Here is Keel again from the eye. And the pitch goes back to Phil Carter one more time and Carter is going to be hit by Wayne Glukowski and Tom Flynn on a sweep to the left. Awful tough on this guy, Carter. Uh, he has been the workhorse the last three years for Notre Dame. He's a great running back. Pitt's defense. Rich Kranick, Yogi Jones, Dan Short, Troy Hill, John Lewis, and Tom Flynn. Defensive uh, linebackers in the backs. Bringing up that point again, keep an eye on Carter. He was injured last week against Navy. Didn't play a whole lot. Uh, we'll see how well and how strong he is this week. Second down and 12. Notre Dame at their own 35. He'll fix the draw. Last time, and is going to be sacked at the 24 by Bill Moss. Bill Moss broke through and had his man corralled at the 25-yard line. And so the Fighting Irish, one step back, or one step forward and two steps back. Let's take another look at it. I'll tell you, as good as that uh, Notre Dame front wall is, and they've had some good games this year, there's no stopping the likes of Belusi, Belusi, Fazzoli, and Mr. Moss. When he gets a hold of you folks, I mean, it's down for the count. You'll see more of that as the afternoon wears on. Third down and 22, Notre Dame at their own 25. Keel until last week. Did not have a touchdown pass all season. It goes to Carter, and Carter's going to be decked at the 26-yard line, a gain of a yard, and Rich Kranick came up very quickly to put the hit on him, and it's punt formation for Notre Dame. And I'll tell you, Blair Keel does not get any respite when it comes to punting. He's the guy that has to do the punting, too, as well as the quarterback. He's been averaging about 42 yards of punt this year. And Pitt will draw back Tom Flynn, number five, the only man back for the punt. So Keel standing at his 11 yard line will punt for Notre Dame as we look at it from the end zone. And you see the clock winding down in the back of the clock. The kick is away. It will be fielded on a bounce if it is to be fielded at all. Getting out of the way of the ball. Tom Flynn letting it roll dead inside the 25 at about the 24. And Pitt's offense will go to work for the first time this afternoon. There's a timeout of the action with a score. Pitt nothing, Notre Dame nothing. We'll be back. Dan Marino. Dan Marino will look to throw on first and 10. Fires hitting a man out of the backfield. Marlon McIntyre is hit by Rick Naylor at about the 26 yard line. A short gain on that pass. Early on. Taking a look at Pitt's offensive line, Jimbo Corbett. Rob Feta, Jim Sweeney at center, flanked by Ron Sams and Bill Fralick on the other side. So for Pitt, it is second down and eight at their own 26-yard line. Thomas now shifting into the eye formation. In on the long count, it goes to the up back. McIntyre, McIntyre, stone wall spearheaded by Mike Larkin and Bob Casey. So, uh, Line of scrimmage is now the 31-yard line. It'll bring up third down and about three. Notre Dame's defensive line, Kevin Griffin, Mike Gann, John Autry, and Bob Clasby. Defensive linebackers and backs, Naylor, Zabagnan, Larkin, Torin, Brown, Johnson, and Duerson. Third down and three. Reno to throw. Over the middle is got. McIntyre out of the backfield, not enough for the first down where Zavagdan makes the tackle. I think, Steve, they'll be short. It looks like they are going to be just inches short of that first down. It'll take a measurement, but I'll tell you, three has been the number so far. Three plays, they've all gone to number three. Marlon McIntyre, uh, I don't know, maybe folks spotted something with him in practice this week. Well, the chains are brought out, and I think they've got the first down. 
smiling on pit on that stretch of the chains. The ball is marked at the 34 and a half yard line. Notre Dame's defense ranking second in the nation versus the run to allow about 56 and a half yards per game. Okay. It is first down and 10 for the Panthers, the number one ranked team in the nation in possession of the football near their 35. And one more time, McIntyre straight ahead. Bob Casey and Mike Gann combined in the tackle with John Upton. Well, I'll tell you what, they're either going to wear out Marlon McIntyre early here or he's going to bust one loose for a touchdown, or they're going to come up with a different play. I kind of think it's going to be the third choice. Second down and seven after the game to about the 38-yard line. No score, first quarter, 8-35 left in the period. Pitt sends out Dwight Collins here to the left on second and six. Now one setback is uh, Marino. Looks to throw, loses the football, and I believe the Fighting Irish may have recovered. Let's wait and see. That may have been a little premature. Pitt has recovered, but a loss on the play back to their 33-yard line. As Marino checks over to the sidelines, coming off the field, Brian Thomas. Notre, uh, Pitt will have third down and 12 at their own 33 as Notre Dame's defense, Steve, digs in. They're tough. There's no question about it. Give up only 12 points a game. you got to do something right. All right, here's Marino. Fires. It is caught at midfield and out of bounds for the first down. John Mosley makes the play. Very confident it was number 19 on the pass. Let's watch it again. Well, this was a, a play that almost went all the way. As Marino went back, he spotted Compton going down the right sidelines, goes up for it, and then when the tackle is missed, his momentum carries him out of bounds. Otherwise, he's gone for six. And so, Pitt with the first down at the Notre Dame 47-yard line. First quarter with no score. Seven and a half minutes to play. And the Pitt Panthers have called themselves a timeout as Marino comes to the sidelines to talk with Coach Fazio. The number one rated Pitt Panthers strive to hold on to that number one spot. There's a timeout in the action with the score. Pitt nothing and Notre Dame nothing. We'll be back right after this. Seven yard line. Marino with one setback. Apparently feels he can throw the football at, uh, at the Notre Dame defense. Completes the pass to Barry Compton. The flag's thrown on the play. And we'll wait and see what this call is. Looks like illegal procedure, Bob. It'll cost Pitt five yards and bring the ball back from the 47 to their own 48. Illegal procedure, illegal procedure on the offense, first down. The officials' remarks were that the clock would start on the snap. So Marino on first down and 15 at his own 48. And it goes to McIntyre. McIntyre off right tackle. Kevin Griffith makes the stop along with uh, John Autry for Notre Dame. You got to wonder why Brian Thomas hasn't carried that ball yet today. Still go with Marlon McIntyre. Well, can't argue with success, though. The guy's doing a good job. Coming up second and 11, the ball now at the Notre Dame 48. The game started with Notre Dame taking the kickoff, forced to punt. Pitt started at their own 24 and are now just across the midfield stripe. Marino looking to throw again. He's three for three. It fires. It is caught at the 32-yard line by Julius Dawkins. Dawkins is going to be hit inside the 30 by Stacy Torin. And it's a pit first down at the Notre Dame 29. Great catch by Dawkins. You know, it seems like every time Dawkins is involved in a catch, it's a great catch. The guy is just one of those kind of players. Now, keep in mind here, the guy that's covering him is 6'4", Stacy Torrin, and he's a good one. But uh, very few can stay with Julius Dawkins when he's got days and moves like that. And good protection from the pit offensive wall. 
First down and 10 for Notre Dame. 20 down in the first quarter with no score. Six and a half minutes. There's Brian Thomas, the first carry of the day, and he's met right at the line of scrimmage by Mike Larkin. And Larkin drags him back, but of course, forward progress will be marked at the 30. It'll be marked as a one yard loss on the play. You know, I think early Pitt is trying to set the tone. They are running right at Notre Dame to just see how tough that that rushing defense it really is against a tough offensive wall, the likes of which Pitt has. Dwight Collins out to the right. Julius Dawkins here to the left. And Thomas also out to the left. Come along the snap. And Marina will recover and lose about two yards and cost them a down. I hate to say it, and I hate to get down on Notre Dame, but uh, really the only thing that has stopped Pitt from moving forward thus far has been their own mistakes, penalties, and a couple of drop balls. So third down coming up. The ball is placed at the 32-yard line. Third down and 13 for the Panthers. No score, as we mentioned. Pitt's drive here started at their 24. Shifts his backs as Collins goes in motion to the right. Look at the time. Incomplete for Julius Dawkins. Covering on the play was Dave Dewerson. But again, Marino had all the time in the world to throw the football. I'll tell you something else, too, Bob. Maybe most of the fans may have missed this, but running out of the eye that time was Dwight Collins, and he's given Notre Dame something to think about now. He didn't run with the ball. He went out for a pass out of that pattern, and I'll tell you, that has got to give him something to think about. All right, Schubert will uh, attempt, and uh, Dan Daniels will hold. The kick from the 38 will be a 48-yard field goal to good. It appears to be good it is. And the number one rated Pitt Panthers have gone on the board first in the game against Notre Dame and lead on the field goal by Schubert of 48 yards. So there's the timeout in the action. With the score, Pitt three, Notre Dame nothing. Alan Pinkett making the catch in the end zone will put it in play, a touchback at their own 20, first down and 10. I'll tell you what that field goal has done for Mr. Schubert. Ed has pumped him up, made him electric. It is the longest of the year for him, 48. The previous best was 39. And that makes it only five out of 10 on field goal tries for Mr. Schubert this year. But when he makes one like that, he's going to kick it out of the end zone every time. Watching Foge Fazio along the sidelines, you would have thought that uh, Notre Dame had just kicked the field goal. <laughs> First down and 10 as Blair Keel brings his team out. As Larry Moriarty as the fullback, Phil Carter as the tailback in the eye. is going to be hit by Troy Hill and Dan Short near the near sideline. A pickup of about nine yards on the play. It'll bring up second down at about a yard. Mike Haywood is a freshman. This is only his second start for Notre Dame. Last uh, week against Navy, he got two for 28, averaging 14 yards a catch. That's not bad. And from upstairs, the call comes downstairs on what happened on the breakdown in the pit play coverage. Second and short for the Fighting Irish. As Keel goes on the long count, gets to the tailback. It is Bill Carter hit by Bill Moss. Goodness gracious, what happened to the lights? <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> Notre Dame has struggled with its rushing game this year anyway. And then when you come up against guys like, well, it's overused again. But here comes the plate. Nobody even gets a hand on Moss as he thunders through. And I'll tell you, it's the freight train bringing him down right here with all the vegetables. So a loss of two on the play. That'll bring up third and three. As Keel once again operating from the eye. And again on the long count. Pitches to Carter. Carter sweeping the right side. Is across the 30-yard line. Tom Flynn makes the initial hit. Dan Short and Troy Hill come up to put the finishing touch on him, but I believe he's got the first down. He's over the 30-yard line. He's got it. A little bit of a test, though, there to show you how strong that... Uh that defense is for Pitt. Moriarty is no small potatoes guy, and uh, they stood him up 
as Carter rammed into him. First, Pitt plays knows how to play defense. First down and 10, Notre Dame at their own 30-yard line. Pitt leads 3-0, 350 to play. First quarter. Keel from the I formation one more time. As White outs to the left. Rolls to his left. The right-hander is across the line of scrimmage and will get out of bounds before he is hit. Dan Short put the big chase on him and will pick up a couple of yards. Pitt's defensive secondary had everybody covered on the pass play. No question about it. So Keel picks up three to about the 33-yard line. It'll be second and seven. Fazio in a conference with his coaches here on the sideline. Probably doesn't have everything together as he would like to have it so far in the first quarter. Defensive. Yeah, well, you always want to be perfect, <laughs> and uh, you know how Foge is. I think it looks pretty good right now as far as he's concerned. Well, whatever holes there are, they want to shore up right here. Second down and seven for the Fighting Irish. Once again, it is Carter. Carter dragged down by L. Wenglikowski. Wenglikowski is the man they have on the run. When it comes to a passing situation, they might put Dolman in there. But Wenglikowski is great against the run, as you'll see right here. Carter looking for room on the outside. They just string it out perfectly. Wenglikowski fighting off his man, gets him in the backfield. Down he goes, and Pitts made another stop in the backfield. So they lost the yard of the play. Called it third down and eight. And obviously uh, a passing down for Notre Dame. Passing situation as Keel sends a white out to the left. And the linebackers came in. He tried to dump it very quickly to Tony Hunter and Rich Cranick covered on the play. So the punting unit is on for the Fighting Irish. And again, they've got to give up the football. Listen to the crowd. 248 to play, first quarter. Pitt three, Notre Dame nothing. As Pitt drops back, Tom Flynn. Up back, I believe. I'll tell you, Pitt is bouncing around. They're trying to confuse Keel. Is Troy Hill. He's standing at the 38, and back from him is Flynn 10 yards. Keel gets a good punt away. Flynn at about the 27. Gets a good block and is going to be hit out of bounds near the 40 yard line by Stacy Torrin. Good shot of the Pitt bench as they look on favorably here so far. They're in command of the score, three nothing, and Bill Moss of the football. Huh. Bill Moss taking a much deserved breather there. That guy, uh, he's already had a good game, you know, and we're only in the first quarter. The ball is just shy of the 40 yard line for the Panthers. I think Blair must be thinking that perhaps Moss is a distant cousin or something. They've been together a lot this afternoon. McIntyre and Thomas in the eye behind Dan Marino. White outs right and left. And it goes to the tailback. Thomas. Thomas hit by Mike Gann and Kevin Griffith. After a short gain to about the 41 as they unpile. Brian getting over those shoulder problems. Uh, hasn't run with the ball a great deal so far this afternoon, but I suspect we'll see more from him later on. And there's the youngster who uh, ran the punt back, Tom Flynn. Second down at eight for the Panthers. 41. Marino completes his pass to Notre Dame territory. Cut. And brought down immediately was Dwight Collins. Stacy Torin with a Panther first down at the Notre Dame 44. Let's take another look this, at it. This Steve. is all, almost a replay of a, of a pass that Dawkins caught earlier against Torin. They're giving him a lot of room. They've got a lot of respect for Dawkins and Collins as Notre Dame secondary does and with good reason. Collins and Julius Dawkins are lined up both this time to the right. Marino has but one step back on first down and 10 at the Notre Dame 44. Throws a quick one to Collins. Collins loose. Collins down to the 30-yard line. Has another pit first down. And is hit by Stacy Torrin and Kevin Griffith. Also assisting on the tackle. He's fired up about the play. Little shock value this time. Quick out over here to, to Collins. Does a quick juke on that man. And then Torrin with a good leg tackle. 
brings him down. And I'll tell you, if he hadn't stopped him right there, well, again, we're talking about six points. Joe Johnson was the man for Notre Dame who was faked out on the brilliant move by Collins after the pass catch. First down and 10 at the Notre Dame 30-yard line. And again, a quick pass on the opposite side of the field. Collins is down close to the 21 or 22-yard line. And again, Stacy Torin with Mike Larkin assisting on the tackle. But another gain sufficient enough to move the sticks up a little bit. Eight yards on the carry. Let's all right. I'll pass play. Let's take another look at. I'll tell you what they're doing now. Slowly but surely, they're bringing that secondary up to stop those short passes. Now watch out for the bomb. That's going to probably be coming up here before too long. Ball is spotted at the 22. Less than a minute to play in quarter number one, with Pitt in the lead, three to nothing. Collins has caught four passes for 44 yards. entire that time had the, the, the going rough is uh, Larkin and uh, Naylor along with Clasby combined on the tackle near the line of scrimmage. They'll give him a gain of a yard on the play third and one. An important one. I don't think at this early stage of the game they'll uh, try and cross him up with a pass here. They'll probably do a little pitch or something but uh, I don't know. They've had such great success against Notre Dame already. Well, Jerry Foss looks on disapprovingly. He's on the short end of the score and Pitt's on the march again. That's the end of the first quarter of the score. The Pitt offense, third and short. And Brian Thomas. Chris Brown for Notre Dame makes the tackle, but not before the first down was made. And the ball is spotted at the 18-yard line. Another Panther first down. Well, they're going a little conservative right now, but then again, they are getting close to the goal line. Notre Dame's pass rush. Conservative at first. I, I don't know what they want to do now. Do you think they're going to start blitzing more of the linebackers? or Got to do something against a guy who's 8 for 8, I'll tell you that. Ryan Thomas shifts back into the eye behind McIntyre, and it goes to Thomas off the left side. Thomas hit very quickly by Mark Zavagnin. After a short gain on the play, Zavagnin with a real hard tackle. <laughs> Take another look at it. He does tend to make real hard tackles. He's the second leading tackler on the team with 61. And uh, when you meet him head on, well, he's going to throw you back a little, just like he did with Brian Thomas right there. That's the uh, playbook tackle, isn't it, Steve? <laughs> I would say that's the way they write it. Second down and eight after the two-yard gain. Thomas, the tailback. Marino looks to throw. He's got his man, Clint Wilson. And Wilson hit by Johnson and Dewerson inside the 10-yard line. Inside the five-yard line, make that at the four as we look on again. Clint Wilson making quite a name for himself with John Brown injured. Just slanting over the middle towards the outside now. Turns it up, almost brings it in before being forced out at the five-yard line. Got his first TD as a Panther last week against Louisville. And, uh, you know, he'd like to get another one, don't you think? Yes, indeed. First and goal from the four-yard line for Pitt. Now we've got two setbacks. And Thomas gets the call, but he's going to be wrapped up by Mike Larkin. Back at about the five or six yard line, so they'll lose a little bit on the play. When you've got first and goal, Steve, I guess you, uh, if, if you want to experiment a little bit, maybe with a new wrinkle or two, you've got uh, a few yards on your side. They lose a yard back to the five. I'll tell you what I'm looking for right now, and I've been wrong before. I'll probably guess wrong this time, but if I'm Coach Fazio, I'm sending Julius Dawkins to the right corner of the end zone, and I'm lobbing it to him and let him jump it up. The Panthers with 24 yards rushing in the uh, first quarter, minus three for the Irish. 91 to 19, the Panthers in the air in the first period. Here's Marino. He fires, and he throws it away. But a flag on the play. Well, I'll tell you, it was the right call on my part for the wrong receiver. That was Dwight Collins, and uh, getting a penalty didn't help things out either. That was the lob pass to the right corner. It's been a favorite of Marino and usually Dawkins all year. This time, of course, it was Collins. By the way, uh, Julius Dawkins needs only one more touchdown to go ahead of Gordon Jones on the all-time pit list for career touchdowns. If he gets one more today, it will be number 22. Gordon Jones with Tampa Bay 
of the National Football League if and when they ever get started. Yeah. That illegal procedure call against Pitt was declined by Notre Dame, which will make it third and five. Three nothing Pitt, 13 minutes to play in the first half. Marino has but McIntyre behind him as the team sets up. Passing and incomplete as Marino fired. Rick Baylor covered on the play. The intended receiver was Clint Wilson. And so the field goal unit comes on for the second time this afternoon. It'll be Eric Schubert with an attempt from about the, uh, oh, the 12-yard line. Even if Schubert connects here, and he probably will, this is chip shot distance, it's got to be a moral victory for Notre Dame tightening up and holding at the five. That's got to be a morale builder for him. It was tough in the early going. We get a good look at uh, Eric Schubert kicking from the 12. And the kick is good. That's his second of the afternoon to uh, add another three onto the scoreboard. The crowd reacts favorably. By the way, 60,162 are watching here at Pitt Stadium. Get ahead of North Carolina State in the first quarter, 17 to nothing. Tie with North Carolina and Clemson, three up in that first quarter. As Schubert kicks off kick into the end zone and Notre Dame elects not to bring it back as Alan Pinkett downs it in the end zone. It'll be another situation where Notre Dame will set it up at their own 20 yard line. Got a flag down Bob. Don't know what that's all about. We want to remind you that the announcers on today's telecast are contracted and paid for by Total Communication Systems and any reproduction, rebroadcast, or any other use of the audio and video portions of today's game without the expressed written consent of Total Communication Systems is prohibited. This one will go against Pitt, and they'll mark it off from the 20-yard line ahead to the 35. Let's see what that's all about. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense, first down. So Notre Dame will put it in play at their 35. Personal foul called on Pitt. Kind of a needless penalty when you force a non-returnable kickoff. Pitt scoring drive, six plays, 18 yards. And on the field goal lead, six to nothing. The second of the afternoon by Schubert. Blair Keel rolling to his right. And throws it out of bounds. Troy Hill covered for Pitt on the play. Joe Howard. Number 24 for the Irish, the intended receiver. And it'll bring up second and 10. Now there's a trend that's being established here early, and I don't know that it's going to hold up throughout the whole contest. Blair Keel is a rollout type of quarterback. Some people from Notre Dame have suggested to me that he doesn't have the strongest arm in the world. Most of his passes, if he completes them, are going to be short ones. Indeed, most of his passes have been short up to down. Second down and 10 for Notre Dame at their own 35 as Keel lines up. High formation. White outs right and left and goes to get on the long count. Rushed by Haas. Keel's going to run with the football and step out of bounds at about the 41 yard line. Rich Kranick made the pursuit along with Bill Moss. Moss was the uh, man who did all the running in the backfield and chased Keel upfield. Gain on the play will bring up third down and roughly four yards. I'll tell you, Moss was racing for a, uh, a mark in the record book on that run. If he brings uh, Keel down in the backfield, well, then he's got the team lead this season with sacks with 10. Right now, he's got to settle for a tie with Bazzoli with nine. So they're at the 41-yard line on third and four. As Keel from the eye. Consistently on long counts, hoping to pick up maybe an easy five on a penalty. Keel throws, completes the pass at midfield. And all the way down to the 35 and a flag on the play. Alan Pinkett caught the ball. J.C. Pelusi made the tackle along with Charlie Jones. But a flag on the play. Against 
against Notre Dame. It's a clipping penalty. That's going to take it back. Too bad that was a nice reception. That was the best yardage gainer they've had on the afternoon, and it's going to be all wiped out because of that yellow hanky. They brought it down to the uh, pit 41 where the flag was dropped. And <laughs> I wondered who was counting. <laughs> I didn't know if that was our director down in the truck or the referee. <laughs> there it is. Well, that wipes out the best play of the afternoon that Notre Dame has had. That's got to be a heartbreaker if you're Jerry Faust, doesn't it? Oh, at the 43, and Faust didn't look happy at all. As we took a look at him on the sidelines, we watched Keel come up to the line of scrimmage. 12-14 left in the first half. It comes back. To Pinkett. Oh. And Pinkett is going to be wrapped up by Dan Short. It'll bring up the punting unit on fourth and about two. Notre Dame at their own 43 yard line. So Keel is back to punt. And uh, Pitt has a couple of different people back there. Uh, Jeff Casper, number 88. As Keel takes the snap. High kick. Casper backpedals at the nine. And is going to be wrapped up and sent out of bounds. Stacy Torin for Notre Dame makes the defensive play. The crowd reaction was the Torin brought him down at least five or six yards after he was uh, out of bounds and no flag. Well, what do you expect from 60,000 partisan fans, huh? You know, there was, a remark, there was a remark made in the press box before the game that there might be as many Notre Dame fans here as Pitt. I doubt it, but there are quite a few. Okay, Bob, if you're buying that, uh, <laughs> I'm selling Pitt Stadium. <laughs> Notre Dame defensively digs in as Pitt sets up at their own nine-yard line. Marino turns and gives to McIntyre. McIntyre hit by Zavagnon and Clasby at the 11, a gain of two. Got somebody getting up rather slowly for Pitt. That's Rob Fada. Right. But he's, he's going to hang back. Up. Yeah, I guess so. Now, there are quite a few people here from, uh, oh, I don't. from Notre Dame. <laughs> They're outnumbered, I'm sure. Well, look at the field. Even it's green, <laughs> huh? Once again, here's Marino on second down. Marino fires almost picked off, and I believe it's his first incompletion of the day as Dave Duerson almost made the interception after the ball was tipped. Well, he has one more incompletion, but there was a flag on that play down here in the end zone a little earlier. But, uh, boy, I'll tell you, Dorison, I think, was rushing up to make the tackle and didn't realize he had a chance for the interception. Marino throws so hard sometimes, the ball can bounce off of a guy, and you don't even see it hitting you until it's too late. All right, let's take another look at it. Now, tell me he doesn't have a little mustard on this throw. Marino was 9 of 12 in the afternoon right off for the 91 yards. McIntyre carries the football, and uh, Zabagnin, who's been all over the field this afternoon for, no, for uh, Notre Dame, makes the hit. And the punting it is on for Pitt, and the Irish fans now uh, come to their feet. There are quite a few of them here. I believe it's uh, Greg Ganser who is punting. Dave Dewerson is back for Notre Dame at about midfield. Dorson's their return man. He's a pretty good one at it. Ganser stands at his goal line. As Fisher, excuse me, as uh, Sweeney snaps the ball. Fair catch called for. And uh, Pitt didn't see it. Flag thrown as Daryl Stone hit the man as he made the fair catch at the 34. And obviously, the football will be brought a little bit closer to the goal line for Notre Dame. They've got their first big break of the afternoon. Yeah, I think Darnell just didn't see the uh, hand go up there. It came up pretty quick. It came down pretty quick. And uh, 
So did Darnell's arm around his neck. And so 15 yards will be stepped off from the 35 or the 36 yard line down to the 21. Now that is a big break. Notre Dame has got to cash in on an opportunity like this. Notre Dame, if let's take another look at uh, what cost Pitt on this play. The answer gets it up high, it comes down quick, and indeed that arm did go up and come down real quick, and I don't think Darnell Stone ever saw it. Blair Keel from the I formation at the pit 21, their deepest penetration, but it came on the penalty flag. And gives to Pinkett. Pinkett wrapped up by Dan Short near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, second down and ten. Nine and a half minutes left to play in the first half. Pitt leads by 6-0, and Notre Dame here. This has got to be critical. Like I said before, Notre Dame cannot afford to come away with this without any points. That's Mike Johnston of uh, Notre Dame warming up on the sideline just in case he's needed. What's the uh, 15 of 16? 15 of 16. First one that was blocked was last week against Navy. Keel has some time. And throws. Oh. His receiver broke the other way. Yep. Tony Hunter turned and ran the other way as Rick Dukovic covered on the plate for Pitt. Sometimes, wonder, how do they work that out? If, if you know, Steve, uh, is it just a matter of uh, a last-minute break, or is that a specific pattern? Or some... I think they were fouled up on the pattern to begin with. I don't think each was aware of what the other was going to do. The man who was closest to the ball on that play was Dukovic. He read the pattern right, but Hunter was just way off it. Kiel, by the way, three of six for 19 yards. We're down to nine minutes of the first half. Notre Dame with their first big threat of the afternoon as Kiel being chased. Has some time. Fires incomplete. Tony Hunter was the intended receiver, and Rick Dukovic made the play for the Panthers to break up the pass. He had a couple of receivers open. Not only that, he could have run the football yes, himself. Yes, and I think he probably would have done better had he chosen to do the latter. Uh, the ball was, he was well covered, Hunter, on that play. The only chance he had was to throw it away from him like he did and hope for a great diving catch. Now, let's see how Mr. Johnson does on the field goal attempt. Ken Karcher will hold. Karcher, by the way, from Shaler, Pennsylvania. An excellent baseball player as well as uh, a football player. Johnson. Kick is good. He does do that. So Notre Dame is on the board for the first time this afternoon, and it happens at 8.53 of the second quarter. There's a timeout of the action with the score. Pitt sticks Notre Dame three. 35-yard field goal by Johnston. Got them on the board. And we were watching during the commercial break. The Irish quarterback, Blair Keel, had his right elbow tape. That's his throwing arm. So possibility was that uh, he was injured or slightly injured on the pass play right before the field goal. Quick pass to Dawkins. Or excuse me, to Collins and uh, Stacy Torrin over there very quickly to make the hit on Collins. And you see Collins coming back as we take another look at it. Okay, I think I get the idea here. Notre Dame lines up so many people on the front line there that they're trying to capitalize on the quick pass to get somebody open and free early and, and get it for a big gainer. So far, it hasn't worked for that many yards. It is second down and seven. Reno's pass is tipped and out of bounds. And was probably going in the direction of Barry Compton as John Mosley for Notre Dame came over to cover. Mosley uh, making the play. Number 19 is Barry Compton, a senior at 5'10", 184. So that brings up now third down and seven for Pitt at their own 25. I wonder if those girls are uh, as warm as they make it seem. I'll do a survey when I go down on the field at Would halfback you? for you, Bob. <laughs> Collins, five for 48 yards, five pass catchers. Marino had a notion of run. Now throws. What a grab! What a 
catch by Dwight Collins as Chris Brown and Joe Johnson come over and make the play, shake it up on the play, Dwight Collins. That one we've got to look at again. It reminded me of the catch that we watched in the pregame show in the end zone. That's right, by Julius Dawkins. Marino got all kinds of time to pass. Got a variety of receivers to choose from. Ops for Collins. Collins going down the right sideline, leaps up, out leaps two other men. Gets paid, pays the price for it, but he comes down with the ball in a 37-yard pickup. Football is at the Notre Dame 42 and a half yard line. Marino turns, gets to the tailback as Brian Thomas gets up to about the 40 before Mike Larkin put the wraps on him with an assist from Bob Clasby. Time left in the first half, 7.30. It is a 6-3 pit lead. The ball placed right on the 40 yard line, second down, and a long seven for the Panthers. I didn't think it would be a duel of kickers in the first half. And if Rocky's prediction holds true, it'll be uh, 10 field goals in the game. Eight for Pitt, two for Notre Dame. Let's hope that they'll be waking us up at the end of the third quarter. Quick, quick pass out here to the near side to Julius Dawkins, and I think there was a hit after the play was blown dead. At least that's what the Pitt Panther fans are calling for. Julius Dawkins makes the catch. And an official timeout. We're on that uh, play as we take a look at Collins on the sideline who came up uh, limping on that uh, spectacular pass catch that he made. Third and four for the Panthers in the backfield, uh, McIntyre and Thomas right behind uh, Marino. Twin setbacks. The pressure is on as Marino this time will run the football, get up to about the line of scrimmage where Kevin Griffith and Mike Gann make the tackle. And it'll be fourth and roughly two yards to go for the Panthers. Take another look at it, Steve. Marino, uh, facing the blitz, had nobody to throw it to, had decided to run it, and got hit by the sack twins, Gann and Griffin. And they've done a share of that this year, five for each of those two guys. And so the punting team is on. Greg Ganser stands at his 49. Pitt will kick on fourth and uh, three. Ball at the 35-yard line. Dave Dewerson is back for the Fighting Irish. 6.06 to play in the first half. Pitt six, Notre Dame three. High time kicking for the sideline. And it will be down by Pitt inside the five-yard line. to bring the ball up to where the ball was first touched at about the seven yard line. So there's a timeout in the alone seven. They trail 6-3 with 5.54 to play in the first half. And it goes to the fullback. And that's Alan Pinkett. Hit out of bounds by Dan Short and John Lewis. Was I wrong on the carry? Moriarty? That was Moriarty. Well, here's what happens here. He fakes it inside and then bounces to the outside where he's got some running room. And what he does is he gets Notre Dame out of some very dangerous territory out to about the 18-yard line. Good run. Probably the best of the afternoon by the Irish. So Larry Moriarty on the carry brings it up to the 18. First down and 10 for the Irish, who trail 6-3. Decides to run with the football as uh, Wayne Blakowski and Rich Kranick make the play on Blair Keel. Bob, that is the way you want to coach defense. They did everything right on that play and made that play a disaster for Notre Dame. They strung out the line so Blair Keel could not get any room to run as he was rolling out and had all of the receivers covered. Temple over West Virginia. West Virginia rated 17th and trail 7-0. Florida State over South Carolina in the second quarter, 14-7. Notre Dame now, second down and 12 at their own 17-yard line. 60,000 plus watching this one this afternoon at Pitt Stadium. Keel chased again. Now we'll run with the football and go out of bounds where it's nice and safe. 
as Al Wendlikowski and J.C. Pelusi. Put the pressure on Keeled, getting him out of bounds. And they lose a little bit more on the play. I believe they're going to bring the sticks back to about the 14-yard uh, line. So a loss of three on the play brings up third down and 14 for Notre Dame. Has he got a shillelagh or has he got a shillelagh? score Penn State ahead of North Carolina State 26 to nothing. Here is Keel on third and long has not been able to pass that successfully against the pit and now throws incomplete as Mike Brooks came up very very quickly to make the play. up fourth down for Notre Dame as Keel now stands at his goal line and will punt it away on fourth and 13. Jeff Casper is back at midfield along with uh, Troy Hill. Keel standing at his uh, goal line as we mentioned. Was moving the line. I'm surprised. Flag thrown as Keel was roughed. Fumbled and recovered by who? Notre Dame has the football at the pit 44. As John Masley makes the recovery. Let's take another look at it. First of all, you're going to see Keel roughed on the charge by John Lewis. Lewis did not get a piece of the ball. He ran into the kicker. But the real damage was done upfield as Pitt fumbled the punt. Jeff Casper could not hold on to the ball, so Notre Dame had their choice and obviously have taken the football upfield. As we watch uh, Jeff Casper on this play, and recovered by Notre Dame. Football is marked at the Pitt 45 yard line. Four and a half minutes to play in the first half. Pitt six, Notre Dame three. The crowd begins to come to life. As Keel sets over center. I backpedals and throws. He's got a man down there. It is caught at the 15 yard line. Caught at the 15 yard line by Larry Moriarty. And Rick Dukovich makes the play, but the damage done on that pass completion down to the 15 yard line. Watch it again. Keel, as we look from the end zone, this time had pass protection. And Moriarty makes a nice over-the-shoulder catch as Dukovic makes the play. Watching it one more time. And he only had one more man to beat. Here's Keel again from the eye formation. That's Ellen Pinkett. Brought down by Dan Short inside the five-yard line. Ellen Pinkett. Picks up 11 yards on the carry and gives the Fighting Irish a first and goal from the pit four yard line with four minutes left to play. In the first half, Pitt leads 6 3, but the Irish are knocking on the door. And the Fighting Irish have taken the lead by 9-6 on the touchdown by Moriarty from four yards out. One more time on the replay.
yards out. The path cleared for him and got in with no trouble at all. Now Johnston will attempt the point after. Archer holding the kick is good. And so Notre Dame has taken the lead. See Moriarty after the touchdown run. Congratulated by his fighting Irish teammates. Notre Dame 10, pit six. Taking a look from the opposite end zone. What a job done by Tom Thayer of Notre Dame on one of the blocks, the other by Larry Williams, number 75, as they clear the path. And there you see a jubilant uh, Notre Damer celebrating. Here's the kick. Take it to the end zone. They're going to come out with it. That's Darnell Stone. And Stone returns to about the 19-yard line. The tackle made by Tony Ferjanic. Ferjanic only a freshman at 225 pounds for Notre Dame. And Pitt will put it in play at their own 19-yard line. Notre Dame, after that uh, costly fumble by Pitt on the punt, went 45 yards in just three plays for the touchdown, and they only had the football for one minute. Moriarty kept the drive with a four-yard run off right tackle. So Dan Marino has got a long way to go. He's got the time, throw short at the 20-yard line and a pass interference call against Notre Dame's Mike Golick. Defensive pass interference. against Notre Dame. And Pitt will have a Passing first down. On the defense. First down. Dan Marino on the pass play. Threw short on the mark, but uh, his intended receiver was interfered with on the play, and so the penalty. First down and 10 for the Panthers at their own 22. Second quarter, 10-6, the Fighting Irish. It's Brian Thomas hit out of bounds by Chris Brown. Up on the near side, Mike Larkin with an assist on the tackle. And it's going to be awfully close to another pit first down. Taking another look at it. Good tackle, or good to block by Ron Sams, number 77. And watch the hit by Chris Brown of Notre Dame, number nine, on Brian Thomas. The ball is spotted at the 32. It is first down for Pitt. The clock stopped on the out-of-bounds play as we look at Jerry Faust on the Notre Dame sideline. His fighting Irish hit by four. Let's take a look at this uh, scoreboard again here. Oklahoma rated 14th in the land ahead of Kansas State at the half, 13-10. his backside of the eye. Makes a quick pass to Clint Wilson, and Wilson is hit by Joe Johnson and uh, Stacy Torin almost immediately after he caught the football at about the 36-yard line. So a gain of about four, make it second and six. Second and a long six. We're under the three-minute mark of the first half. Pit at their own 37-yard uh, line. And it goes to Thomas again. Thomas across the 40 to the 42-yard line where Mike Golick makes the tackle for Notre Dame. Marino is elected not to put the ball in the air. Following that penalty, the ball up to, uh, as we mentioned, the 41-and-a-half-yard line. First down department, Pitt with 10, Notre Dame with 5. Big play for Pitt on third and short. First down, Brian Thomas got the call and he picks up the yardage before Mark Zavagnin could make the tackle. 
wow. Faust really upset. Felt that perhaps uh, somebody missed an assignment. As you look at Brian Thomas after picking up the first down. So they move the sticks. And we're down to the two minute mark. Taking another look at it. Marino turns. Thomas finds the gaping hole. Now we're inside two minutes of the first half. Spocio looks on. Marino with a lot of time is going deep. And it's incomplete. The intended receiver was Julia Stockins and Dave Dewerson covering on the play. A lot of time as Marino elected to go for the bomb that time to Julia Stockins. Dawkins now coming off the sideline, returning to the pit bench. Marino, 13 of 18 for 154 yards so far in the first half. Army and Air Force all tied in the first quarter, 7-7. Seven and seven. And as you know, Pitt plays Army next. And Air Force is on the uh, schedule for Notre Dame, not too far down the road. Marino almost lost the football, was wrapped up by Bob Clasby, number 91. Time left, a minute and a half in the first half. Notre Dame in the lead by a 10-6 score. As we take another look at Marino's entrapment. By the way, the ball now set at the 40-yard line. Here's uh, Clasby coming in, number 91. Almost stripped the ball for Marino on the play. So at the 40, Pitt has it third and about uh, 15. Marino chased again, but gets the pass away to McIntyre. McIntyre will only pick up about two yards on the play as Rick Naylor, number 37, came in quick on the tackle, and Pitt will punt the football away, and they're going to let the clock run. 43 seconds and counting here in the first half. Taking another look at the pass by Marino to McIntyre. And that uh, went straight ahead to McIntyre, just a kind of a shovel pass. And wrapped up by Rick Naylor, number 37. Dewerson and Johnson are back for the punt. Pitt letting as much of the first half clock wind down. Notre Dame is not stopping the clock at this point. 13 seconds, high kick. This one is going to bounce at the 20. Roll inside the 10 to the 5. And down at about the 3 or 4 yard line with uh, only one second left in the first half. So Notre Dame will go into the locker room with a 10-6 halftime lead. And the number one rated Pitt Panthers uh, with a couple of questions to answer in the locker room at halftime. The Irish touchdown came after the Panthers had fumbled the punt. Giving Notre Dame excellent field position. Moriarty took it in from four yards out. And the kick at it for the extra point uh, made it 10-6. Only one play left. Keel will take the snap and just go down a bit to eat up the balance of time remaining here in the first half. And so the Fighting Irish have an upset in the works. Will receive the second half kickoff. They have Barry Compton and Darnell Stone back, and Marlon McIntyre is up. Hal Von Weil for Notre Dame kicking off. Bob Tattern with Steve Talbot and Steve Froggy Morris at the Pitt Stadium press box as Notre Dame kicks off, and we start our second half. This one's going to go back toward the end line and out of over the end line as the kickoff reception was made by Darnell Stone and Pitt will have the football first down and 10 at their own 20 yard line. Here's another score. Maryland trailing Miami 6 nothing in the second quarter. Bob I think a significant factor right here the wind is blowing from the south to the north end of the stadium It's going to be hard to pass long for the Panthers in this third quarter if it stays that way. Taking a look at the first play of the second half. Reno to the tailback, Ryan Thomas. And Thomas hit by Mike Gann, number 78. A gain 
of about three on the plate of the 23 yard line. If you're looking for a glimmer of optimism about the score in this game, Pitt's ability to come back, let me point out that Notre Dame has been outscored in both the third and fourth quarter by its opponents this year and rather substantially. White Collins is out wide to the right. Julius Dawkins out to the left as Marino takes the snap, looks over the middle, is being rushed, and is going to be brought down near the line of scrimmage. And the way he was carrying the football, I thought perhaps he might wind up losing it. Mike Gann and John Autry. Autry, the principal tackler, as we look at Marino coming back to the huddle from our end zone camera. Is Blair uh, Keel running up on the sideline for Notre Dame? You notice on the right hand, he's got that uh, tape that was put on in the second quarter. Pitt is looking at a third and seven or a third and a long seven. Key play, the pitch back to Thomas. Thomas sweeping around. Picks up some yardage as he avoids one tackler. Now he's going to be hit and uh, brought down for a loss. Kevin Griffith and Joe Johnson make the play for the Notre Dame. Fighting Irish back at about the 20. And so it is now fourth and 10. Take another look at it as you watch Thomas evade one tackler. Joe Johnson described as one of the most physical men in the secondary for Notre Dame, and you can see why right here he's going to put a lick on him. Joe Johnson, number 27. And Pitt punts on fourth down and 10 at their own 20. That's great Ganser standing in the six-yard line. Ganser's longest of the afternoon, a 55-yarder. Nice, long, high-spiraling kick. As Dewerson is hit and dropped at about the 40, the tackle was made by Daryl Clark, number 36. A 12 yard punt return for Dave Dewerson. And so Notre Dame at the 40 yard line. Clark, sophomore, number 36, the youngster who made the tackle. Notre Dame with the lead and the football at their own 40-yard line. High formation for Keel, gets to the fullback, and Larry Moriarty only gets a couple of yards before Rich Kranick and J.C. Pelusi come in very quickly to make the tackle. We're going to take a look at uh, Pitt's offensive line huddled around the offensive uh, line coach. Paul Dunn is number 61. And of course, number 77 is uh, Ron Sands. Number 64 for the Panthers is Rob Fada. Second and eight. Notre Dame at their own 42. 60,000 would like to have something to cheer about here. It would take a big defensive play by Pitt here to get them going again. Keel throws. It is hot and dropped. Mike Haywood was the intended receiver covered by Troy Hill. It brings up third and eight for the Fighting Irish, who at the moment have the lead in the game by a 10-6 score. Well, you know, you look at the secondary for Pitt this week. They've got John Lewis in there now for Tim Lewis. Got Dukovic in in place of uh, Tom Flynn. This is not really the same secondary that has done so well against the teams all year long. It's a little makeshift, and they're having to adjust with it. Here's Notre Dame on third down and eight at their own 42. Keel. Chased. And is out of bounds near midfield. Good pursuit by Pitt, but they just couldn't put their apps around him. Number 56, who did the pursuing, was Chris Dolman. And I think Keel is uh, shaken up on the play. Fazio watching here on uh, the near sideline. Keel shaken up a little bit is uh, coming back onto the field of play. I don't know if he ran into. Uh, Might have run into the yard marker over there. That's what I was thinking about. Those are kind of dangerous to run into. But they're stretching the chains right now to find out if uh, Notre Dame came up with the first down. But they're going to be short. It'll be fourth and inches. And Keel 
He looks like though. about about a what a half a yard. And the punt unit is on. Notre Dame's not going to take the chance because any change in momentum here and uh, the Irish are in a lot of trouble. That's right. Danny Marino anxious to get out there and uh, get that sputtering offense going again. No touchdowns scored by Pitt. Their six points came on two field goals by Eric Schubert. One of them the longest of the year. Casper, number 88, is back to take the punt. This man's got to have a little jitters on his mind right now. He doesn't want a repeat performance of near the tail end of the first half. Keel back to kick. Standing at his 35. Nice high kick. Casper lets it bounce. Uh -oh. Notre Dame is going to down it to the bottom. Oh, my. Yard line. Oh, my. Great play. By John Masley. I think that's the uh, second time he's done it in the game. There's a timeout in the action of the third quarter for the score. Notre Dame Casper lets it bounce over his shoulder, and Notre Dame makes the play inside the three yard line. They got it marked at the two. And on first down and ten, John Autry and Kevin Griffith for Notre Dame combine on the tackle to Joe McCall. Number 34. Joe McCall, as we watch uh, Keel on the sidelines, appears to be okay, shaking off the after effects of running into uh, his own bench. I think it might have been that down marker. I, I agree with you. It might have been that down marker. That's dangerous for knee injuries. Hit with the ball, second down and seven from their own five. This time it's Brian Thomas. And Larkin and uh, Zavagnan make the tackle. That combined effort on the defensive play puts the ball down at about the seven. I know Dan Marino is anxious to get this offensive unit going, but not from his own two. You know, again, there's the inexperience of having Jeff Casper in there. As someone pointed out to me, in fact, it was Froggy. If it had been Tom Flynn in there, he would have at least fair caught it probably and probably would have taken a chance and fielded it and run with it. Jeff probably a little jittery over that drop in the first half. Third and five for the Panthers. From his end zone, fires over the middle of his cut. First down. Rick Naylor and Mark Savagnan combine on the tackle on Joe McCall. But McCall has picked up a Panther first down at the 15. Watch it again. McCall coming out of the backfield on this play, the speediest of the backs on the pit team, and hoping for a little uh, open room over the middle. Gets some good yardage, but fails to bust for a big one. Naylor had a nice tackle on the play. Marino, a study of concentration as he checks over the Notre Dame defense and understanding that he's got a lot of time to go, but he wants to call a timeout. Perhaps not happy with what he sees, even on first and ten. So he wants to come over and talk with uh, Coach Fazio. Break in the action with the score. Notre Dame 10, trail in the game by 10-6. And they've got a first down and 10 at their own 15-yard line. Moreno shifts his back side of the eye. As McCall and Thomas in the backfield. It goes to Thomas. And what a tackle put on Thomas by Mike Gann. Mark Zavagnan coming in to make the uh, assist on the tackle. A gain of about three to the 18. To bring up second and seven. What do you think they're talking about right now? I think they're talking about getting some more points on the board, and that's not good news for Pitt. They're backed up pretty far. Michigan ahead of Illinois, 16-10 in the fourth quarter. Michigan rated 15th. Maryland trailing Miami at halftime, 14-7. As Marino looks to throw, fires, caught. What a catch, penalty flag down. White Collins made the grab. Stacy Torn on the defensive play. Two penalty flags were thrown. First down for Pitt. Let's take another look at it. And Steve, well, Torin knows that Torin knows his speed on this play. He's simply trying to get to the ball, get it away, and hope that no flag is thrown. But I mean, these officials are not blind. That was an obvious interference call. So the ball is brought ahead to the 28-yard line. First down for the Panthers at their own 28. Under 10 minutes in the third quarter. Notre Dame 10 and Pitt 6. And number one rank.
looking very much in jeopardy at this stage of the game, but it's only the third quarter. Thomas gets the call coming out as the tailback. Up around to the 34-yard line, Bob Clasby and Rick Naylor combine on the tackle. Well, I'll tell you, Bob, there is not a good sign down on the sidelines. We'll get a shot of it later on, I'm sure. Tommy Flynn has his coat on, his helmet off. He's standing on the bench. Just cast away some crutches. A uh, guy standing around with crutches is not a good sign. I think Tommy Flynn is through for the afternoon. Gain of six on the play. Second and a short four for the Panthers. Marino gives to McCall. McCall corralled by Mark Zavagnan. And Bob Clasby at about the 41. That cheerleading coaching style of Jerry Faust has got his uh, fighting Irish charged up, but uh, Pitts picked up another first down. I'll tell you, Faust has come right out on the field to yell at his charges now. Uh, if he keeps that up, we're going to have him and Froggy sing a duet at the end of the game here. I'm telling you. I, I don't think it's going to sell a million. <laughs> Twin backs for Marino, McCall and Thomas. It goes to Thomas on the draw. Once again, John Autry and Mark Zavagnan had that one diagnosed, or at least were there. A smiling Pitt cheerleader has not given up. No. And Pitt has not given up. They are right now, if you think the footage is tough, they, the going tough, Hey, listen, they're playing against the number two team of the nation in rushing defense. Look at this. Penn State ahead of North Carolina State in the third quarter, 47-0. Thomas, 14 carries on the afternoon for 41 yards. Thomas now shifts behind the tailback, or the fullback, rather, to get into the eye formation. Thomas gets the call. Finds a big hole off right tackle. Thomas stumbled and got up to the 45. It was Kevin Griffin who tripped him up and had it not been for that, I'm sure Thomas would have seen nothing but green all the way down. Take another look at it, see if you can catch where he was tripped. All right, again, Thomas making to the middle, bounces to the outside, eludes one tackler there, breaks, well, almost breaks the tackle. Down he goes, and I'll tell you, that tackle is not made there. As Bob said, it's the longest touchdown run from scrimmage this year. But it is a first down for Pitts at the Notre Dame, 45. Here's Marino looking to throw. A lot of time. Has got his man. It is caught by Julius Dawkins at about the 30-yard line. And tackled by Chris Brown. Dawkins came back. Take another look at it. This is smart receiving. Dawkins seeing that Marino's in trouble. Doubles back to the ball. Makes a nice catch. No way Brown can stay with him. And Pitt is on the move. This drive, remember, started on the one-yard line. What a job Danny Marino and Pitt have done so far. And I'm sure that Marino said thank you to Mr. Dawkins when he got back into the huddle. He's At the it. 30 of Notre Dame, Pitt trails 10-6, seven minutes to play in the third quarter. On the draw, Thomas is hit quickly. I think he stumbled a little bit. Mike Larkin made sure that he didn't get up. A loss on the play of about two or three. Second, and uh, we'll call it 13. Here it is again, that front line of uh, Notre Dame will throw five guys at you. If you're going to get through there, you're going to have to you're going to have to make your blocks all right. No one got to Mike Larkin on that play. Uh, he just burst right through the middle and stopped Thomas in the backfield. Just nobody got a hand on it. Here's another score. West Virginia has come back. They've tied Temple. 7-7 seven, seven at the half. Marino. A little short pass to McCall goes incomplete. We'll call a safety valve on that play. And Zavagnin was there for Notre Dame to make the play. That'll bring up third. And this has got to be a key drive. As you had mentioned, Steve, a drive that started at Pitt's own two-yard line. They've come all this way and now are faced with a third and 13 at the Notre Dame 33. I would think it would be absolutely demoralizing if they come away with no points right here. This well, it's, it's an obvious passing, Don. I'm sorry for the interruption. I, I don't know what you would call in this case. Well, I got everybody and his brother out, I'll tell you that. And Marino completes his pass, and what a catch. Keith Williams, number 21 for the Panthers, makes the catch, and 
John Mosley, number 48, pushes him out of bounds at about the 17 or 18-yard line. Look at it again as Marino, with all the time in the world, fires the ball. William Hughes sparingly so far this year, and I'll tell you, if Pitt goes on to win this ball game, they're going to remember it for a long, long time. End zone angle this time. Marino with lots of time to pass this time. Right on the money. This is vintage Dan Marino. Oh, oh, oh. The ball is marked at the 17-yard line. Momentary timeout, I think. Uh, well, there is a discussion on the field. Jerry Faust very much upset. His fighting Irish have got their backs to the wall. They gave the indication of the first down. Well, what it is, I think Notre Dame has called timeout now, maybe to regroup, or maybe they're not happy with something they see out there. Well, in either case, the Panthers are on the drive, and keep in mind that this particular drive started at their own one-yard line, and they are on the move, and it looks like we've got a worried Notre Dame coach on the sideline. I'll tell you how worried he is. He just called Mark Zavagnin over and then motioned for the entire defensive unit to come over to the sideline and huddle with him. I have not seen that happen in a long time. I don't believe I've ever seen it. But Notre Dame has called a timeout. And Pitt is marching with the football. They have a first and 10 at the Notre Dame 17. Here we see Coach Fazio perhaps a little more relieved that uh, his offense has been able to move the ball on a sustained drive. We're in the third quarter, 6.21 to play. Notre Dame leads 10-6. Marino has completed 17 of 24, 201 yards. But he hasn't gotten it in the end zone yet. And that's where they pay off at the bank. Not in yards, completions, and attempts, but in score. White Collins is wide out to the left. Julius Dockett split in left. As Dan Marino with one setback, it's Joe McCall. A fumble on the snap, and very quickly Marino recovers at about the 20. Obviously, Marino not happy at all with that, but uh, they'll lose about three yards on the play. That's about the third time that's happened today. You uh, kind of wonder, with a veteran center and a veteran quarterback, why those sorts of things happen. So from the Notre Dame 20, we have a second and 13. McCall and Thomas in the eye behind Marino. They give us to Thomas. Thomas inside the 10 down to about the six yard line where Dave Dewerson finally made the tackle. A 13 yard gain for Brian Thomas. Watch, watch the hole open up. Yeah, watch Bill Fralick on this play. He, he opens a hole for Thomas. Look at that block that Froggy could have run through. I could have run through behind him and Bob, you could have been trailing the play. We all three could have gotten through. Thomas with 16 carries, 69 yards in the afternoon. Ball is placed squarely at the 11-yard line. Marino wants a little bit of quiet. He wants to make sure that his team is going to hear the signals. On first and goal, Thomas. He may have a face mask as Mike Larkin reached, yeah. for, reached for the runner and got his face mask. And the flag went down very, very quickly. I'll tell you what. Pitt won the battle of the statistics in the first half, but are still on the short end of the 10-6 right now have put together their most successful drive of the ball game, a drive that started at their own two. Half the distance to the goal line, Steve. Here it is again. Thomas getting very little running room, but it's not helped out at all by somebody grabbing you by the face mask. That'll turn you around. It'll also turn the referee around, and he'll drop the hanky on the ground. And it'll give you a chance to score a touchdown and get back in the ball game. That's what Coach, Coach Fazio's hoping for, of course. And I'll tell you, his stomach right now has got to be like an automatic cheesemaker. You know what I mean? Pit at the Notre Dame three-yard line. Five minutes to play in the third quarter. They're down by four. Two setbacks. McCall and Thomas. And it goes to Thomas, tiptoeing his way to about the one-yard line where Stacy Torin makes the tackle. Dwight Collins came in motion to the near side to try to pull over a couple of those linebackers. So they've now got it marked at about the uh, one yard line. It is second down and goal. 
I think if Thomas doesn't do a little stutter step here and stumble, and he's had a couple of problems that way today, he's in for six. But uh, that's ancient history. we got to worry about what's coming up now. A touchdown here would culminate a 98-yard drive that almost began yesterday, it seems. Thomas tried, and he was driven back by Kevin Griffith, number 56, and Jerry Weinel, number 94. And if you get a tough. chance to see that one again as Fazio looks on. He obviously doesn't want a field goal here. Bob, what they're doing is they're going strength against strength. Freilich offensively against Griffith and Gann. And mm. uh, Freilich got one good block there, but nobody again took care of Griffith. And he made the tackle, saving tackle too. All right, they're down to about the half-yard line. It is third and goal for the Panthers. Full high side. Thomas. Looking for roll, he's in for the touchdown! Brian Thomas has put the Panthers back on top by two points on that touchdown run of only a half a yard. Nothing fancy about this, just student body right. The old sweep on the pitch out, lots of blocking in front of him. Thomas in for the score, and things have changed on this cold afternoon. And to attempt the extra point, Eric Schubert, who this afternoon has two field goals to his credit. Dan Daniels will hold for the right-footed kicker. The snap of the ball, and it is up and through the uprights. And Pitt has gone back up on top. At 3.42 in the third quarter, a timeout of the action with a score. Pitt 13, Notre Dame 10. Will be the speed of any of the guys in the backfield on the Notre Dame team had his first big opportunity last week when Carter was hurt. Ran for 129 yards and a touchdown. Uh, you may be seeing a lot of Pinkett here in the second half. So Notre Dame with the ball at their own 39-yard line. They trail 13-10, third quarter. 3.37 left in the period. Notre Dame's first possession after Pitt's first touchdown of the game. Long count by Keel. Keel hands off, and as you call it, Alan Pinkett. Pinkett getting about five yards to the 45 before Rich Krenick put the wraps on him. It'll be second down at about five for the Irish, who now find themselves in that uh, come-from-behind position again. Notre Dame came into Pitt Stadium this afternoon with all the hopes of upsetting the number one team in the land. Pitt, 98 yards in 17 plays, 818. That's possession of the clock. From the 44. I don't know if Kiel's reciting the, the alphabet or not, but... Uh, Hands off this time to Larry Moriarty, and Troy Hill was in there so quickly, and is he charged up? Yeah, Sugar Man Hill does tend to get fired up. They say he's the most emotional player on the team. He is the bumper on the team. He will get you fired up when you need to get fired up. All right, last week, Washington was a loser. Penn State in the fourth quarter leads North Carolina State 54 nothing. Let me finish the story after the next play, and I'm going to get an opinion from Steve on the polls. I formation Notre Dame third down and three at the at their own 46 yard line. Once again, a long count for Keel. Throws a quick pass and is caught. And a first down, but a flag thrown before the play. And I think they let up at that point as Joe Howard, number 24, caught the ball for the Fighting Irish. And while they mar uh, march off the penalty, last week Washington lost their first game, first game of the year very quickly, dropped to number 10. If Pitt's victory this afternoon is not impressive enough, I don't think it's going to knock them out of the number one spot, but will it affect them down through the, the remaining few the weeks at game? all? game? Offense? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm trying to wind as fast as I can. Give me a break. <laughs> no, no, I don't think it's going to affect them. They're doing this against the number two rushing defense in the land. If you win, you come away with any kind of a win, you're impressive. Jerry Faust, coach of Notre Dame, looks on as Notre Dame on third and eight at their own 41. Tries to get a sustained drive going. Keel on the long cut. Fires. It is cut by Troy Hunter. And Rich Krenick very quickly came up to make the hit. But the putting unit is on. Yep. It's a short pass play. Now that's that's a play you wonder about. Why they don't go for the flag and try for the first down. Instead, they go for a little five-yard pass over the middle and come up way short. So Notre Dame is on the punt. 
as Blair Keel stands at his 30 and Jeff Casper number 88 is the deep man and up a little bit ahead of him I believe is Darnell Stone or Barry Compton. Be interesting to see what Casper elects to do on this putt. It is Troy Hill number 22. He's the up man. Hill's going to watch this and go over Casper. Fair catch, makes the catch at about the 16. The young man needed that. That is going to restore his confidence. That will help him out throughout his college career. He needed that catch. And so Pitt will put it in play at their own 17. But of Army 17-7, future opponents of teams here this afternoon. Navy at halftime leading Syracuse by three. Ryan Thomas gets the call. And Thomas is going to be stacked up by Mike Larkin and Kevin Griffin. Obviously, Notre Dame's defense is just trying to get the, the whole team excited about something, even though they continue to make the, the tackles after the whistle. That, that's the whole point of the whole thing. They want to get the team charged up. And on the other side of the line, Pitt, as you have seen them throughout the year, will try and wear you down offensively with those big, strong linemen in that third and fourth quarter and open up some vulnerable areas. Third quarter winding down. It is second and eight. Pitt at the road 20. Marino to Thomas. Thomas runs into Bob Glasby and Mark Zavagnin. A stone wall. And will not get another playoff in this third quarter. Thomas in the afternoon with 76 yards to his credit and 21 carries. A little better than three yards a carry. And there's the end of the third quarter. But the Panthers have come back after trailing at halftime. The final 15 minutes of the ball game, which sees Pitt on top 13-10, and they have the football at their own 23rd down and seven. Reno backpedals from his own 10. Oh my goodness, the time. And finally fires and short to Julius Dawkins at the Notre Dame 45. Dave Dewerson covered on the play. And you got to wonder about Notre Dame's defense uh, rushing the pass. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, a big sigh just went out of that man, Jerry Faust, because uh, Marino had way too much time to pass there. Matter of fact, I think the time worked against him because he tried to be too fine then when he finally did let go of the ball. All right, Dewerson and Johnson are back for the punt. Johnson's the up man. Dewerson is deep at about his uh, own 33. As Ganser stands ready to punt at his own six yard line. Fourth quarter just underway. And Pitt has a 13 10 lead. Ganser gets the kick away, a short kick. Fair catch called for it, the 45 by uh, Johnson. And Joe Johnson downs the football at the 45, and the cheers go up for the Pitt defense. Well, before they die down a little bit, let me point out one thing. That ball is resting on the 44-yard line, and that's not too far from the end zone. Pitt sitting on a three-point lead, a little conservative on that last drive. So let's see what happens right here. Blair Keel brings the team out of the huddle and runs from the eye formation with wide outs right and left. six-man front. A little bit of razzle-dazzle. Keel fires deep. He's got a man out there. It is caught for the touchdown. Joe Howard. Here's what happened. They gave it to Phil Carter. Carter gave it right back to the quarterback, Keel, and Keel fired a 55-yard scoring pass to Joe Howard. And suddenly, Notre Dame is back on top. Let's take another look All at right, it. All right, here it is. It looks like it's going to be a pitch and a run by Carter. Leaf Licker back to Keel. Long bomb. Let's see who's got the coverage. It's Dukovic. Howard wide open. Six yards behind his man. Again, I hate to overemphasize it, but had Tom Flynn been in there? Well, who knows? And I'm sure that if Joe Howard would have dropped the ball, he would have kept on running to the tunnel. <laughs> you bet. Here's the extra point attempt by Johnston. And it is good. So Notre Dame seesaws back into the lead. At 14.36 of the fourth and final almost become ordinary. You see a flea flicker at least once a game now. All right, here's the kick. Fielded at about the eight-yard line. And return to the 20. Joe Johnston makes the tackle. 
Was that Mike Meehan, number 82, that returned? Pitt has the football at their own 21. Jerry Faust along the Notre Dame sidelines. Let's take another look at that uh, razzle-dazzle play that got Notre Dame the lead. Uh, well, there's no real trick here. I mean, there, of course, there is on the play itself, but Dukovic obviously got faked, got suckered, thinking it was going to be a sweep, and it left it wide open for a touchdown for Howard. Here's Thomas. Run out of bounds at the 21-yard line by Chris Brown. Just no running room for Thomas, and the best he could do is uh, just keep skirting the uh, the end until he was finally pushed out of bounds. And that play stops the clock at 14:25 of period four. No gain on the play. Second down and ten for Pitt. Notre Dame with uh, one play that took only eight seconds of time on the clock. Uh, that pass from Keel to Howard. Marino anxious to get another drive going. To Thomas. Thomas at the 30. He's got a block. 35 40. Thomas out of bounds at about the 42. Mark Zavagnan makes the tackle with Mike Larkin. Thomas just came out of the backfield and uh, was right there, Johnny on the spot as uh, Marino hit him on the pass. And they're up now to their own 43 yard line. Oh, and look at the pained expression again. I feel sorry for coaches. I mean, they go through this thing 10 times a game. Here's the play, and there's not a lot of. Uh, well, not a lot of difficulty to it. You just spot the guy open over the middle. He turns on the speed. You get a nice block from Julius Dawkins, and uh, you get a little extra yardage. Marino backpedals, looks to throw. A lot of time, and again over the middle, incomplete. And again, Brian Thomas was his primary uh, target as Mike Larkin defended on the play for the Fighting Irish. Second down, and 10. So the incompleted pass stops the clock at 14.09 as uh, Coach Fazio tries to put together the uh, facts and figures on this one. Auburn ahead of Rutgers at halftime, 17-10. Marino on the afternoon here, 18 of 27 attempts, 223 yards. Normally, you've got a couple of touchdowns even thrown with figures like that. All right, second down and 10. Fifth and 43, Marino back. He's got the time, throws, and it's cut by McCall in the backfield. McCall at the 50, 40. And down inside, the Notre Dame, 40 to the 37. Finally, John Mosley made the, uh, the tackle. A little flare pass. And it turns into a big gainer for Pitt. All right, two things made this happen. The speed of Joe McCall, the accuracy of Dan Marino to find him. Actually, he was a secondary receiver on the screen here. Now watch Ron Sam's number 77. Block out here, open up a hole for him. McCall cuts back to the left, does the rest on his own, nearly breaks it upfield for a touchdown. And a great block thrown by number 53, Jim Sweeney. Yes, indeed, the center coming a long ways out to that block. So Pitt first and 10 at the Notre Dame 38. And Thomas tries to punch his way up the middle, but Mike Gann and John Autry are there to make the tackle at the Notre Dame 34. So a gain on the play of about three. We'll call it second and seven. Look at this. Nebraska over Oklahoma State. Seven nothing in the second quarter. Pitt has 18 first downs on the afternoon, Steve. And 13 points on the scoreboard. Big difference. Yeah. Pitt is down by four with 13 minutes remaining in the game. And this time a call getting the football. Kevin Griffith. Makes the tackle near the 32-yard line. Bob, you got to have a lot of faith in your offensive line to run two plays back-to-back -back like that uh, because now you're forcing an obvious passing situation. Third and four, they could try the run, but it's 12.40 left in the game. Uh, he almost got to throw a screen at least uh, to get that first down. Keel anticipating that he's going to be going back out shortly. Big play for Pitt, third down and about four at the Notre Dame 31. Marino going to throw on third down. Fires into the end zone. It is tipped. Great defensive play by Chris Brown of Notre Dame. Julius Dawkins was the intended receiver. That was the defensive play of the game. Julius can go up and grab him with anyone, and Chris Brown showed great leaping ability on that. He may have paid the price. Now. Here we go. Number nine is Chris Brown. Remember, he had an abdominal muscle pull last week. 
Kept him out against Navy for part of the game. He has to stretch high as he knocks the ball away from Julius on this play. Right smack dab in the middle of the end zone and watch him grab. Yes, it is his abdominal area that he grabs as he comes down. I think he's re-injured that and he may have to come out of the ball game. Also for Dawkins, he was looking back into the sun. Tough in, catch, no way, any way you look at it. In trying to make that catch, but we have an entry timeout. The situation is this. Notre Dame leads Pitt 17-13 with 12-19 to play in the football game. On that pass play, which was a third and four, Marino went to Dawkins from the 31-yard line. It would have been a 31-yard scoring play, but the pass was tipped away by Chris Brown, who injured himself on the play. So when we come back, it'll be fourth down and uh, four yards to go. Pitt with a football at the Notre Dame 31-yard line. Boy, what a job Penn State is right. doing this afternoon. Now let's take a look at this man. We've been watching uh, Eric Brown, and he's up now. It looks like he'll walk off. No, he's going to need some help to get off, I think. But while he walks off, take a look at this man, Eric Schubert, two for two today. But this is going to be the most important one he's been asked to kick all afternoon. When they finally put that ball down for a field goal, it's going to be in the vicinity of about the 36, 37-yard line, making it about a 47-yard field goal attempt. Will that be his longest, or would he tie? Got a 48-yarder today. But remember, going into today, the longest he had all season was 39 yards. The pressure of being number one in the nation rests right now on the foot of number one. And how ironic that is. Schubert's field goal would only bring Pitt within one point. Dan Daniels will hold if they indeed kick. Keep in mind Daniels is a quarterback. Schubert gets the kick away. And makes it. And that'll tighten up the score a wee bit as Schubert connects on his third field goal of the afternoon. There's a timeout of the action with the score. Notre Dame, seven. remember, has not had a lot of playing time. It's not entirely his fault what's happened this afternoon, but you got to feel like they're going to try and capitalize on him. All right. Keel at his 20-yard line and runs from the eye formation. Larry Moriarty, the up back, and it goes to the tailback. That's Pinkett, and Pinkett is hit by Troy Hill and Rich Cranach. But he picks up a good four yards on the play to about the 24. A pit man shaking up on the tackle. Notre Dame 17, Pitt 16 were under the 12 minute mark. Keel this afternoon. Five attempts, excuse me, five of 13 attempts for 126 yards. Does anybody know who Froggy is? I right? haven't the slightest. I'm trying to figure that one out. He used to live in a shoe. A years ago. I think so. <laughs> Here's Keel on second and six from the 24-yard line. Moriarty is going to be piled up. Yogi Jones among the tacklers, along with Rich Cranach. So they lose about uh, two yards on the play. Back to the 22, third down and eight. I wanted to see the uh, interception statistics this afternoon. I'm scratching my head thinking, have we held it? Don't believe so. Passing down for Blair Keel. That's right. I don't believe there has been a turnover this afternoon. Except for the pit fumble. On That's the, right. On the punt. <laughs> How can I forget that? Keel throw. Fires. And broken up. Oh. By John Lewis. And Lewis, one happy man. And remember. What a defensive huh. play. Oh. And remember, he is playing for Tim Lewis, who was out with an injury. The man will remember that play against Notre Dame. And there is no relationship, by the way, between the two Lewises. This man they call the duck, and I'll tell you, he waddled over to get this one, huh? Oh, because Joe Howard had a step on him as well, Steve. That's right. Jeff Casper back to take the punt, along with Troy Hill. Hill is the up man, as Keel stands ready to punt at his own seven-yard line. I'm enjoying this one. I love it. Notre Dame they hit by one point, but it's it's been one whale of a game. A short kick by Keel as Lewis fair catch and he loses the football but falls on it at about the 42. Oh. Troy Hill on that fair catch. There's the timeout of the action in the fourth quarter. 10:36 to play in the game and the score: Notre Dame 17, Pitt 16. We'll be back right after this.
scare on that fair catch. Reno fires on first down. It is caught at the 45 by Brian Thomas and Kevin Griffith, along with Mark Zavagnin, are very, very in quick on that tackle. Short, you know the Short gain on the play. Yeah, do you notice know Spoge's hair is getting a little grayer? Maybe it's my imagination. I don't know. Maybe it's the sun or maybe it's the game. But I'm sure he's <laughs> aged and gotten a little gray over this one because he's got to be thinking about that number one ranking in an undefeated season that he's trying to hold on to. Second down and eight. Big hole for Brian Thomas. Before Joe Johnson finally made the hit. In Notre Dame territory at the 47, it'll be close enough at least for a measurement if they don't think they've got it. Okay, I'll tell you, when they've had success running this afternoon, they've had success running with Mr. Sams and Mr. Fralick to the right side. Big hole there by those two gentlemen opens up for Brian Thomas. He gets the rest on his own, but uh, give a lot of credit to the right side of that pit offensive line. But see how close they are now with the first down. Sam's at 270 pounds and Fralick at 270 pounds. You've got a quarter of a ton of beef opening up the hole for you. They are not ballerinas, that's for sure. First down and 10. Pitt made the sticks. The football is at the Notre Dame 47. We have 10 minutes to play. Here's a look at uh, a man in hurt. That's Tom Flynn on the sidelines. Boy, can they use him now. Been out since the second quarter. Notre Dame ahead by one point. Here's Thomas with running room. Breaks into the open and quickly the hole closes. But he's down to the Notre Dame 35. Stacy Torn and Joe Johnson in the secondary make the tackle. There was daylight, but it closed quickly on Thomas. But a nice run by Thomas. All right, here's what you do. You keep going to Fralick and Sams, then you cross them up and send it to Jimbo Covert and Rob Fader's side of the field. They open up a nice hole, and uh, Mr. Thomas with another nice game. Pitt's on the move. So Pitt is down to the Notre Dame 35. It is first down and 10. Two setbacks. Thomas and McCall. McCall gets the call. And hurdles is going to be set down by Mark Savagnin, who literally picked him out of the air. I think he went Panther hunting that time. Open season on Panthers this afternoon at Pitt Stadium where the number one ranked Panthers trail by one point. We're under the nine minute mark left in the game. Well, here's a little what if. We're at the 33 yard line. Uh, all right, let's take a look first at this hit. Uh, McCall saying, you know, I could win the ball game with this run right here. And then, oh, hey, wait a minute. Oh my, somebody forgot to move him out of the way. Here's Marino on second and long, looking to throw. Fires has got his man. It is cut by Dawkins. And Dawkins loses the football and recovered by Notre Dame. It was John Mosley who made the recovery. And Pitt coughs up the football. Well, all right, here it is. Uh, Marino straight back to pass. Little play action fake there to Thomas. Spots Julius open on the left side. He makes a catch. Going to turn it upfield now but loses the ball. Trying to change hands as he was making the turn. And for the second, uh, second turnover of the day, he goes in the Irish's favor. So Notre Dame with eight and a half minutes to play in the game. Lead by a point, and they've got the football at their own 24. Keel fires incomplete. And the intended receiver was Joe Howard, where Rick Dukovich this time covered his man all the way. But you can see they're going after the young man again. I'm, the question I ask myself at this point, if you're leading by one, why come out throwing on first down unless it's the element of surprise, particularly when you want to do two things, not only hold on to the football, but grind as much of the clock away as you can. Well, look at the statistics. Notre Dame has coughed up the ball 12 times this year. 12 times, that's all. Its opponents 23 times. They get 25 after today. That's the second turnover in the game. Both turnovers are against Pitt. Second and 10 for the 24. Keel straight up to uh, Alan Pinkett. Pinkett at the 35, 40, 45, and Pinkett's going to go. <laughs> 76 yards for Alan Pinkett. And suddenly Notre Dame leads by 23 to 16 on that touchdown run by a youngster that Steve said in all probability Notre Dame would elect to go to here in the second half. A little bit more than they did in that first half. 
gradually each week, Pinkett got a little better, got a chance to start last week. Just takes a handoff straight up the middle, goes to the outside when the tackle is missed here, and then a cut here, and another missed tackle, two more missed tackles there. If you don't catch the guy there, he's gone. Alan Pickett on a 76-yard stroll in the park at this point, and we got an injured pit player down at Notre Dame player down around the 45-yard line. It's Joe Howard, number 24, but uh, right now he's off under his own power. And Notre Dame, a 23-16 lead. Looked like Pelosi had a shot at him. Chris Dolman, lots of guys. The man has elusive speed, as I told you. Gained 129 yards last week. Has been gradually improving with each game he's played in. Mike Johnston will attempt the extra point with uh, Karcher holding. And it's right through the uprights. So Notre Dame has padded its lead. There's a timeout. Of Notre Dame in the uh, lead now by 24-16. Compton and Stone back to take the kickoff. From Hell Von Weil. The crowd has quieted down quite a bit. This one's going to go back into the end zone. They're going to bring it out. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And across the 25 to about the 28. Great run by Barry Compton. John Mosley made the tackle. At about the 27. People doubted his decision coming out. Watch the kick return as we look from the end zone that Pitt is running back from. And I was one of those that doubted it, but look at the wedge open up. They just, like a big V, they open everybody out wide. He takes it straight up the gut. And a saving tackle prevents him from going all the way. Darn near broken. Very confident. 27-yard return. First down and 10 for the Panthers. McCall with a football hit at the line of scrimmage by Kevin Griffith and uh, Stacy Torrin also there to assist on the tackle. And amidst all of this, Penn State has added to their total with North Carolina State at home and lead by an impressive 54 to nothing. Now, wait a minute. That's impressive if you're Penn State. If you're North Carolina State, it's embarrassing. So Pitt with the ball at the 27. It is second down and 10. Pitt trails 24-16, fourth quarter action, 7.30 to play. Marino, plenty of time. Bros almost intercepted by Kevin Griffith as uh, Brian Thomas in the vicinity of that pass from Marino. That would have been the nail in the coffin had Notre Dame come up with uh, an interception right there. Well, I want to... All right, here it is. Marino, of course, is under a lot of pressure here to, to make every pass click. Throws it a little high. It's tipped. Griffith in the right place. I think Danny just failed to see him in that coverage. Reno 19 now of 31, 226 yards. I want to send our statistician back to the book in a moment for something else. Two setbacks for Marino. He's being chased. Marino in trouble. Throws it away. Now. Mike Golick and Mike Gann put the pressure on Marino. Notre Dame fans felt that there should have been intentional grounding on the play. As Marino walks off the sideline and uh, the punting unit is on. Let's send our statistician to work. When was the last time Danny Marino did not have a touchdown pass in a game and did they lose that game? But so far today he doesn't have one and you know what the score is. Joe Johnson, number 27 for Notre Dame, and Dave uh, Dewerson back as Tony Russia, a junior, will do the punting for Pitt. Russia stands at his own 14-yard uh, line. Notre Dame 24, Pitt 16, 7.20 to play in the game. Fourth down and 10 for the Panthers. Good kick. Fielded at about the 26-yard line by Dewerson. Dewerson bumped very hard. And brought down by Caesar Aldersert. We have an injured pit player. He's getting up slow and will be coming off under his own power. That was Daryl Clark, I believe, number 36. He appears to be okay. Notre Dame will have the ball at their own 34. And if you're Jerry Faust, now you've got to consider eating up the rest of the time. You're ahead by eight. 
it's not a safe lead, but uh, you want to try to eat up some of that clock. Uh, if you, I stay on the ground right now if I'm Jerry Faust. Don't put it in the air. Larry Keel with the football. Sends a man in motion. Keel the quarterback. Goes back with an end around. It's Joe Howard. Howard loose at the 50 and down at the pit 47 by Bill Mars. I have a Notre Dame first down. I hope we got a replay on that because I think there was a clip there that was missed entirely. Maybe a replay will show that play and, and it's an important one because it results in a first down. And here's the end around play action fake toss back to Howard. Watch the right side of your screen. What do you think? Was that a clip? Look like it to me. Howard's going to get big yardage out of this play. Notre Dame's going to get a first down. The clock's going to keep running and Pitt's in big trouble. I believe it was Mike Brooks, number 50 of Pitt, who was victimized on that clip. So Notre Dame, football, first down 10, Pitt 47-yard line. Tailback, Alan Pinkett with a football, and Pinkett spilled at about the 47 by Mike Brooks, who uh, wants to make up for a, a clip that was not called. Ball marked at the 43-yard line. Second down and six on the four-yard carry by Ellen Pinkett, number 20. Bob, here's the situation. You're pit, you're trying to force a turnover against a team that just does not make turnovers. 12 all year. Tough spot to be in. Larry Moriarty, the up back in the eye. Right, right behind quarterback Keel. Six minutes left in the game. Moriarty with the football. 30, 25, 20. And finally dropped by Dukovic at the Panther 15-yard line. Well, Aaron Lewis with an assist on the tackle. Sorry, Steve. I'm sorry, Bob. There is some protestation by Bill Moss back up around the 40-yard line, perhaps feeling he was wronged or hoping he was wronged. But uh, if Dandy Don were here, he'd be getting ready to sing the party's over. Hole opened up over the middle there. Just good running by Moriarty. I think the Pitt defense has been out there quite a while now. They're getting a little tired. So the Fighting Irish with a football at the 14 and can hammer the final nail in the coffin with a touchdown here. Look at Jerry Faust. Heel hands off to Moriarty and uh, J.C. Pelusi was the first man to hit him near the line of scrimmage. Well, if this uh, trend holds up, Notre Dame goes on to win the game. I don't want to be the prophet of doom, but the trend will continue. Jackie Sherrill, in his maiden year with Pitt, lost to Notre Dame his first time out. In all probability, will happen to Foch Fazio. Arkansas ahead of Baylor, 7-0 in the first quarter. Razorbacks rated fifth in the land. Keel on second down and 10. Goes to Pinkett. Pinkett down to the seven yard line. Eight yard gain before Rich Cranick came in to make the tackle, number 55. I'll tell you what else has happened out of this game. I think Mr. Pinkett's won himself a starting job over Phil Carter. Little toss back to him, cuts it up inside. Missed tackle there. Dukovic trying to do a leg tackle job on him, doesn't work. Gets some extra yard, and uh, Notre Dame now down around the seven yard line. Notre Dame's running backs have about uh, 142 yards. Look at this, LA oh. over Alabama, 17-nothing at half. And in fact, they're playing at Alabama. Incredible, incredible year in football. Third down and short. Pinkett dancing his way for the touchdown. And Notre Dame has tallied another. Carries for the touchdown, and Notre Dame adds to their total, now leading Pitt by 30-16. to 16. When we go back and look at this game, there will be several things we'll think about. But the fact that Pitt did not score early when it had the opportunity is going to be one of the big ones. Jerry Faust obviously a little more relaxed along the sidelines, but he's not going to let that uh, look of composure last too long. Johnston with the extra point attempt. And Notre Dame has added another on the scoreboard. We only have 4.06 left in the game, and Notre Dame has stretched their lead by 15 points. One other thing, when they kicked that extra point and made that touchdown, now this is really tough to take if you're the number one team in the nation. 
Notre Dame has now scored the most points it has ever scored against an opponent this season. And it comes against the number one team in the nation, 31 points. Another one of those things that uh, might be long in Ripley's, believe it or not, at least yeah. for today only. 31-16 uh, Notre Dame. Notre Dame will be kicking off. And the Panthers, I don't know what they've got in that playbook or what they've got as uh, a last scratch hope. Compton, number 19. And Dar Darnell Stone, number 46. Take a look at uh, Jerry Faust's reaction on the touchdown, if you will. <laughs> you know, he might even have a voice left at the end of the game today. <laughs> Saved his job, Froggy points out. I agree. I, I was just thinking uh, it might be contract time over the weekend at South Bend. Compton, uh, two yards deep in the end zone. He'll come out with it. Five, ten. And up to about the 15-yard line. Compton determined he'd like to break one and get uh, Pitt back going again. Rick Bernardo for Notre Dame made the tackle right at the 15-yard line as the suicide squad now leaves the field for both teams. Well, Pitt did trail 13 to nothing to West Virginia earlier this year, but as my director down in the truck pointed out much earlier in this game, there was a lot more time left and with 401 left. Uh, you better come up with some quick miracles if you expect to win this one. If Dan Marino does not uh, hit on a scoring pass today, that would break his record in what, 17? 17. McCall with the football, spilled at the 20-yard line by Mark Zavagnin after a five-yard gain. And I would still like to find out that last game, if anybody can check for us, where he didn't complete a touchdown pass if they lost that game. Moriarty, number 39, on the Notre Dame sideline, looking on with uh, a little contentment, I'm sure. Marino quickly out of the huddle, 339 to play in the game. Notre Dame ahead by 15, 31-16. Here's Marino dropping back. Marino now scrambling. A lot of time. Fires to McCall at the 25-30, 35-40. 45-50 and down inside Notre Dame territory at about the 48-yard line by John Mosley, number 48. McCall on that play. As we look on, Marino could have eaten lunch. Travelick finds a little safety valve in McCall. He takes the ball, heads up field. And Notre Dame playing way back here. They're playing what they call the prevent defense. Don't want to give up the big score. So Pitt with the football at the Notre Dame 48. Marino fires. It is caught by Dawkins at the 26. Or excuse me, Dwight Collins. And Stacy Torn makes the tackle. Dwight Collins, number 32, made the grab at the 26. And Pitt lining up very quickly. Three minutes and five seconds to play. Yeah, hold on to your tranquilizers. They are moving. And there's the possibility of an onside kick if they score quickly. Wouldn't that be a nice ending? Oh. Three oh one left and the clock running. Now a timeout called by Notre Dame. Is that a surprise? Well, here's the situation. Notre Dame leads 31-16 with 3:01 to play, and the Fighting Irish have called a timeout. Here's he has 283 yards. And this was a beauty. You'd never know he was behind 31 to 16. Completely fearless. Throws it in traffic, completes it. Nice grab by Collins. Dave Dewerson, number 23, made the tackle for Notre Dame. So we started to mention the uh, situation was this. Pitt trailing by 15 to Notre Dame with 3-0-1 to play in the game. Have the football at the Notre Dame 26. And if they score, the object would be, let's see, they would be down by 31 to 22. They'd have to go by the two-point play. Here's Penn State. The final over North Carolina State, 54 to nothing at University Park. And a, and a director named Tom Hewitt is smiling and laughing to himself down in the truck. Well, every time Penn State wins, it's cause for celebration. Here's Marino. Throwing incomplete. Well, I say cause for celebration because Mr. Hewitt happens to be a graduate of Penn State. Incompleted pass at the 22-yard line by Marino. Watch it again. Well, this one has completion written all over it. It's going to Clint Wilson. 
Joe Johnson and just as up. the ball gets there, Joe Johnson hammers him. The ball goes free, and uh, it's an incompletion. You hold your breath when they make those tackles in the uh, spinal area. Yes, you do. 2.57 left. Panthers desperately trying to get on the board here. Completed pass to Dwight Collins. Collins hit by Stacy Torn as soon as he caught the football. And uh, the clock winding down. Third down coming up for the Panthers. And about six yards to go. The ball at the Notre Dame 22-yard line. After the Sugar Bowl last year, I suppose miracles are possible, so hold your breath. Here's a pass almost picked off. Mike Golick made the defensive play as the intended receiver, Brian Thomas, who came out of the backfield, went for the sideline. Mike Golick, number 55 for Notre Dame on the defensive play. Doe for the football, fourth down. And the Panthers. Dan Marino huddling right now well, as we look from the end zone. And if you're Jerry Faust, I think you're sending just about everybody on this play. Little, look for a little sack action, a little blitz action. See what happens. McCall is the only setback the Panthers have. He's audibleizing. He knows something's up. Yeah, he's going to have to call a timeout. And he let the clock go all the way down to 229. Yeah. That's because he was reading blitz, I'm quite sure, on that play. Very little protection back for him on a situation like that where he got everybody out for a pass. Uh, and he saw it. He had to use the timeout. There's no getting around it. Well, Pitt coming into the game at 7-0, down by 15 points, two and a half minutes to play in the game. Dan Marino over to the sideline. Joe uh, Noncheck, uh, not the gentleman with the headsets on, but now shielded from view, stepped into the picture. Marino's talked with his offensive coordinator. That's Andy Urbanic, one-time coach at Penn Hills. Well, what do you do? You got two minutes and 29 seconds left in the game. You trail 31 to 16. It is fourth and six at the 22-yard line. And now, all of a sudden, you find out whether you're as a coach, you're a genius, whether as a quarterback, you're a genius, or just human. <laughs> and we find out in just a moment. Ben has the football at the Notre Dame 22. When we get the snap underway, it will be fourth down and six. Of course, the six doesn't matter as much as just keeping this drive going. Anything short, shorter than six yards, it's all over. Marino. The rush is on. Marino chase. Yep. Back at his uh, 40. Notre Dame 40 throws. And it's incomplete. The intended receiver is Brian Thomas. Dave Duerson, the big play along with Mike Larkin. And so Notre Dame will take over on downs. By the way, I've got to give credit to Dan Marino scrambling like he did that there. Uh, he's, he's running for his life right there. It is no accident that once he gets away and delivers the ball, Mr. Duerson will knock it away. Duerson with six interceptions on the year. He knows how to play the ball when it's in the air, just like he did there. Let's look at it. Look at Marino it. gets hammered as he lets go of it. Watch Duerson literally dive in front of Brian Thomas to knock it away. And with that dive, so goes Pitt's chances. 2.20 left in the game as Blair Keel to Alan Pinkett. Pinkett hit in the backfield, dropped by Dave Pozzoli. And Pitt will elect to, well, I don't think they have a choice. Or do they have another timeout remaining? Got one left. They do have one left on the scoreboard. It does so indicate timeouts left one. Barring a turnover, huh? Loss on the play back to the 19. So it's second and 13. Notre Dame holding on to a 15 point lead. 31 16. Deal on the long count. Eating up an awful lot of time. Look at this. Moriarty stumbles and falls at the 28-yard line before Rick Dukovic comes in to make the defensive play. Yeah, I'm afraid uh, the Panthers' defense has just been declawed. They've been out there too long. The offensive line is getting the surge now at a time when they need it to control the clock and the ball. Notre Dame will be content with a minute 16 counting down to run out the clock. They'll hold on to the ball like it's a million dollar check. You can bet on that. Minute and seven left in the game. Kill to Moriarty and a 
very short game before L. Wenglikowski comes in to make the tackle, and now Pitt will call their final timeout of the game. And it comes with 59 seconds left. And so they will send back Jeff Casper. Boy, what a spot to be in again, huh? Now, if you bring this one back all the way, that is a lot of wishful thinking, I realize, huh? We go from the basement to the penthouse all in one day. And number 22, the up man for the Panthers, uh, that's uh, Hill. Hill standing at about his 40. And Compton back at about the, excuse me, uh, Casper rather, back at about the 30. Well, now, you know, even here it's a little bit conservative. I mean, if I'm down by 15 points, I think I might try and block that kick. He's got two guys back here. Well, let's see what happens. I don't know. All right, the timeout has uh, concluded, and we are ready to go with the final minute of play. Keel standing at his 15-yard line. In fact, Pitt even relaxed a couple more. They want to go back and form up the wall. Yep. Casper at his 25, coming up to the near sideline, and is going to be hit and dropped. And with only 48 seconds left in the game, Tony Fujanic for Notre Dame makes the tackle at the 31-yard line. And Pitt, with its final scoring opportunity, will have to drive 69 yards and do it very, very quickly. So if you're a Pitt football fan, you've, uh, you've only got a prayer. And it lies on the arm of Dan Marino so to speak, the old wing and a prayer, huh? Marino backpedals. Does have plenty of time. He's got a lot of running room, and that's what he's going to do, and probably want to run out and get out of bounds. He makes the sticks before Stacy Torn was able to dehorn him mm -hmm. just across the 40. Nearly took his head off there as he slid under it. So it's a brave young man right there. Marino picks up the first down. Two quarterbacks dressed here today who played outstanding baseball in the pitching positions. Dan Marino, one of them, Ken Karcher for Notre Dame, who has not seen action today, is the other. Karcher turned down a nice contract with, with the Philadelphia Phillies. Had two no hitters in high school, didn't he? In the playoffs? I saw one of them against uh, Springdale High School a couple of years ago. Somebody jumped offside. Incomplete a pass by Marino as flags were thrown. 35 seconds left in the game. And the crowd is filing out in large numbers now. Well, they came in with uh, anticipation of keeping that seven-game winning streak of 1982 going and the number one ranking, of course, very much in jeopardy. How many top ten teams are there who are undefeated? Four out of ten? Well, it's Georgia, SMU. Uh, that's about it, I think, isn't it? Arkansas? Arkansas, that would be the other one. Three out of the ten. UCLA. Thank there, you, Tom. There one. <laughs> We're adding and adding. LSU is another incompleted pass intended for Clint Wilson. That's right. They have ties. I was going to bring that out, but I didn't want to embarrass our director. Besides, Tom, we're talking top ten here, buddy. <laughs> Mike Larkin, number 42 for Notre Dame, defending on the play. 33 seconds to play. Second down and 15 for Pitt. The ball is at their own 36. Marino, you, know, you take a look at the uh, practice week when you get ready for a team like Notre Dame. And uh, well, it's all about to end in less than a minute. A practice week that I'm sure was uh, one very arduous, hard-working one. McCall catching the pass is down to the zone 45 by Rick Naylor. And uh, Pitt will not be able to stop the clock here. Less than 20 seconds as they line up quickly at the 45. Notre Dame 31, Pitt 16. Nine seconds. Marino. To Thomas, leading the pass at midfield, and John Mosley makes the tackle, and it's all over. Notre Dame has upset. The nation's number one ranked college football team, Pitt. The final 31 16.
Boston and Tonic at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, anyway, the two you're going to see this afternoon are the cream of the crop. Uh, the first one is Miss Werner. She's outside now. I'm waiting for her. Yeah, you'll like her. Uh, but the second one, Miss Jacqueline. Now, this is a class act. I know it was wrong before. I was too aggressive. I have a very good feeling about these two ladies. I hope so, buddy, because this is it. I'm a lawyer, not a pimp. All right. Kurt, listen to this. Quinby.